Choosing and tuning garbage collectors in Java requires detailed information on how a garbage collector performs at runtime with specific application loads. In JProfiler, the system telemetries include the GC activity. This measures what percentage of the time the garbage collector was running and is information that the JVM provides through an mBean. One important piece of information that is missing here is what types of collections are performed and what causes those collections. Data of that kind is GC-specific and is not published through the native tool interface of the JVM. Instead, the garbage collectors log their activity with JDK Flight Recorder, or short JFR. Since Java 17, there is an event streaming facility for JFR events that JProfiler can use to record data for the garbage collector probe in the JVM and custom probe section. As with all probes, this probe is not recorded by default. For a live session, you can toggle the recording action in the probe. The garbage collector probe has a different set of views compared to the other probes. It is not based on probe events and their various cumulated representations, but on the structured data that is provided by the GC-related JFR events. The main view shows all recorded garbage collections in a table. Each garbage collection is a row and the most important metrics are shown in the columns. By default, the sort order is chronological, but you might want to reorder the table to take a look at the slowest collections. The reason that there are separate columns for the longest pause and the sum of pauses is that each garbage collection is composed of multiple phases that produce separate pauses. In these collections, there are only slight differences. Also, the duration of a garbage collection is not equal to the sum of pauses. Because a garbage collection only partially pauses the JVM while it is executing. For the selected collection, the pause is only half the duration. The cause column shows you why a garbage collection was triggered. Here, for example, a call to system GC triggered a full garbage collection. You can see that from the associated G1 full value in the collector column. It also caused a substantial pause of more than 50 milliseconds, which is why it is generally not a good idea to call system GC. The collections with a shorter duration are mostly in the young generation space and are named G1 new for the G1 garbage collector. The G1 old collections take longer. They clean up unreferenced objects in the old generation. To inspect the various phases of a garbage collection, you can toggle the tree icon in the GCID column. Each row in the nested table is a garbage collector phase. The full collection spends a lot of time marking live objects in the entire heap. On the right side, you can see further statistics for the garbage collection. Here, the used heap was reduced by 64%, and there were slight reductions in the metaspace. These changes can also be positive. While analyzing GC activity, filtering is an important tool to compare different subsets of garbage collections. At the top of the table, there is a filter selector that lets you choose any column and configure a corresponding filter. An easier way to filter similar garbage collections is to use the context menu on the table and select the filter condition based on the column values in the selected row. As you can see, you can add multiple filters to narrow down the garbage collections of interest. It is also possible to add filters from the nested GC phases table. Let's remove these filters again. From the data in the garbage collections view, several telemetries are generated. If you are interested in minimizing GC pauses, the longest pause telemetry at the top will be the most interesting one. You can drag along the time axis of the telemetry to select the corresponding garbage collections in the garbage collections view. The heap and metaspace telemetries are based on the statistics that you can see when expanding a garbage collection. This means that the data is not regularly sampled like for the memory telemetries in a full profiling session. If no garbage collection occurs during a time period, there will be no data. Each of these telemetries has two data lines, before GC and after GC. The differences are typically large for the used heap telemetry. At each time you can see how much work the garbage collection has performed by comparing the values of the two data lines. For the committed heap telemetry and the metaspace telemetries, the differences between both lines will often be small. The GC summary 
shows you measurements that are aggregated over the entire recording period. Each measurement provides the number of garbage collections as well as the average, maximum, and the total values. The most important data at the top are the pause times that directly affect the liveness of your application. In the GC configuration view, you can inspect the common properties of garbage collectors that can either be set explicitly or that are set implicitly by the garbage collector itself. These properties are common to all garbage collectors and help you understand their differences. Finally, the GC-specific flags give you an idea what properties of a garbage collector can be tuned and let you check their actual values. The origin column shows you how the flag was set. Default values have not been modified from the standard settings, while ergonomic flags have been adjusted automatically by the garbage collector. Together, the views of the garbage collector probe deliver the necessary data to understand what is happening in one of the most important subsystems of the JVM. They provide insight that can be translated into improved tuning and consequently into a better performance of your application.